were carrying flaming torches and I could feel the anger and the rage and the temptation to throw the torch into the base and set alight to something. And, and if people have got to go to the lengths of fucking trashing machinery and burning it, then that's what people do. And the only way to actually stop them is by actually going out there and sabotaging their systems so that they can't carry on. They're destroying our atmosphere, they're destroying our children's future, so how can we be criminals? What we're doing may be classified by them as criminal damage, but it's morally justified and morally defensible. <laughs> Suffragettes. They went around smashing windows of, of the ministers to get what they wanted, you know, and nobody in the later day rejected that as criminal. Suffragettes were infuriated by the wait-and-see policy of Asquith, the Prime Minister. Militancy reached its peak of violence. No property was safe from their arson attacks. At all times, Mrs. Tankless was adamant in her ruling that our militancy be against property only. At no time endangering human life. Welsh Language Society saw how important um, broadcasting was really as an area of, of campaigning because at that time um, television obviously was becoming more and more important as an influence in people's lives and yet what we had in Wales was only say about two or three hours a week of Welsh language broadcast, the rest being in English only. And not just being in English only, but not being about Wales and not being relevant to us and not saying anything about people's lives. In that people actually started to take, uh, to, to do criminal damage really to television studios um, and to uh, climb television masts and uh, get arrested really for smashing equipment. But what that actually then did was to inspire a far greater number of people to obviously do things on a lesser scale but nonetheless to be part then of a wide-ranging campaign calling for a Welsh television channel. Toxifying the, the, the planet is not recognised as criminal damage then um, we are going to have, we're going to be faced with more and more um, of a gulf between what the people in power say is necessary and what is patently obvious to people is necessary and it's just you know the whole economic base is leading towards this kind of social and kind of environmental degradation in order to grow we're either going to have to encourage a whole lot more people to take mass actions or yeah we're going to have to slightly change tactics the skirts had moved up and down then they were kind of moved back to near the sound system and they kind of transformed their role and became cover for um, these alleged tree planters to plant trees, two trees taken out of the path of the M11. Well, the focus of my actions have been against Trident, the nuclear submarines, and started campaigning in 1979 and tried all the democratic ways first or so-called democratic ways first and they just didn't seem to be getting anywhere and so then we started saying right civil disobedience and that involved cutting the fence to get into the base and personally I struggled with that and I find I found the whole idea of damaging property a difficult one to overcome I think there's a whole upbringing to do with respecting property and I found that difficult to begin with but once I'd done it, once I had actually cut the fence there was a great delight in doing it just a wonderful feeling of elation that for once uh, this was something that was being done on my terms that I had power over the Ministry of Defence just for a moment Sometimes you do a fence cutting for symbolic reasons, but normally you cut a fence to get through to somewhere else so that you can do something else, like other forms of criminal damage. So what sort of criminal damage actions have you done? They've ranged from super gluing locks, cutting fences, to now mostly um, cutting coaxial cables that carry data from spy systems at Menwith Hill. 
to the operation so that the National Security Agency can't listen in on telephone conversations and military communications. A rally to mark the first anniversary of work on the Newbury Bypass turned violent today when hundreds of demonstrators stormed the construction site. They set fire to mobile offices and equipment, leaving police outnumbered and powerless to stop them. At the time, everyone thought it was shocking because it's flames and it looks very, very drastic. But, but if you were actually there and you saw the happiness of the people, the fact that people were asked to get out of the way, um, people were dancing, people were having a completely calm, calm of atmosphere. That is what isn't seen on, on small shots, small sound bites that you see on the news. Sensible. <laughs> Turn of the paint. Another coat of paint, was that? People have got to go to the lengths of fucking trashing machinery and burning it. And that's what people do. And everybody that was there that day was, was happy, was like pleased to see it. It was revenge for nine miles of countryside destroyed forever. When you see the state of the environment at Newbury, that damage is sort of glossed across. People, the fact that people burned down some man made implements. You know, the fact is that is how frustrated people are getting. Why aren't people looking at the fact that, that the people's frustration and anger is, is drawn to that point? down the fence, you're doing it to try to get to these dogs and to try to stop the torture that they're going to be going through when they go to the laboratory. And I think that's a positive thing. I don't think that fence has the right to exist. I don't think that they have the right to hold these dogs here. And I think it's, it's our job and it's our duty to make sure that this doesn't go on and direct action is, is the best way to ensure that it's not going to happen. It's one of the most effective tools that the animal rights movement has to use. You've got to put yourself in our enemy's shoes and ask what they wouldn't want. Of course they don't want demonstrations, of course they don't want public education, but they also don't want us to damage their property, to trash their property, they don't want us to liberate their animals. So uh, just put yourself in their shoes and that's what the Animal Liberation Front have done. And we have been one big pain in the ass, to say the least, for animal abusers in this country. Well, I also... Um, pass my knowledge on to other people so that if I, I go to prison for it or I'm put out of action and I can't do it, other people have knowledge there to do it themselves if they want to. But I make sure they know all the risks and the fact that it does, you know, these things do cost thousands of pounds worth of damage and that if they get caught they could go to prison for it. It's not about um, picking on individuals and, um, and threatening people. It's about changing systems because the change is more radical than changing individuals. You know? and, and it's the imagination and the ingenuity that's the most important thing, to keep doing things different, not to do, carry on doing the same thing. You know, there's the old union saying, united we stand, divided we fall. You know, and if we start bickering and arguing amongst ourselves, then we're going to be disunited and they're just going to cross us. I think one of the things to beware of in a campaign is whether we're being driven by the media to do something more uh, upfront, more dangerous, more eye-catching. And I think it has to be our decision uh, to do these things, not the media's decision. <laughs>